Hey guys, welcome back to Nadir Audio. Today we're going to be putting together a simple two-channel home theater using the PS Audio Sprout 100 and a pair of ELAC B5 speakers. So I've never been a huge home theater guy, but I did have a 5.1 system set up in the living room back in the 2000s that was based around a entry-level Harman Kardon AV receiver. And that was pretty cool, it worked pretty well, but I found that when I really get into movies or television shows, I would kind of forget about the enhanced sound. And that plus, even with a 5.1 system, it can be a pain to make room for everything, especially if you're changing out furniture or if you're dealing with a smaller space. So I did try stereo two-channel home theater back then, but it never really worked out with the equipment I had at the time. As soon as you got rid of that center channel speaker, it became hard to hear dialogue and it just didn't really work out. But I always liked the idea of two-channel home theater and in recent years I've sort of kicked around the idea of setting something up. Uh, but it wasn't until recently when my wife asked if there was a way that we could play music from her phone wirelessly in the living room. And it occurred to me that the only device I have that has a wireless streamer is the Sprout. So it maybe be a good idea to bring the Sprout out here. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know the Sprout was sort of my main amplifier in my listening room. And I did have it paired up with these ELACs before, and they have really good uh, synergy between the two. Um, but when I upgraded to some LS50 speakers, which I actually really like uh, and want to keep in my listening room, they didn't pair up as well with the Sprout. Um, they they work well for some things, but had kind of an anemic, um, not muscular enough sound for the heavier music that I listen to. Uh, so I have a tube amp in there now, which surprisingly works pretty well with the LS50s, and I'm hoping to get kind of a beefier Class AB or, or maybe even a more powerful Class D amplifier in there at some point. Um, but it made sense since I had the Elex in the other room and I had the Sprout and wasn't using it in the listening room to just move everything out here. So I was able to set up this whole thing without buying anything except for just a long optical cable. So I just went to Target and got a inexpensive Philips cable, hooked it from the TV into the optical input in the back of the Sprout, and then just set everything up as you see it here. So let's take a little closer look at uh, what I've got plugged in. So the TV we're using is a Samsung 55 inch 4K TV. Uh, its model number is UN55KU6300F, uh, which is quite a mouthful. Uh, but we've had this TV for about uh, four years, I think. I think we bought it in 2016. Uh, and it's been great. We haven't had any problems with it. It's uh, got a great picture and it's big enough to watch movies or do whatever else you want to do with it. Uh, and then running directly into the TV, uh, we have two devices. Uh, one of which is an older Apple TV. I think this is circa 2014 or something. But we still use this uh, to purchase a lot of the content we watch in addition to the uh, Netflix and the Amazon Prime apps that are built into the TV itself. And then the other item that we have running directly into the TV is this older Samsung BDP1600 Blu-ray disc player. Uh, so I've had this I think since around 2008, so it's pretty old at this point, um, but it allows us to play some of the older uh, Blu-rays that we still have. And I, I occasionally pick one up if I want to see something that's only available on Blu-ray and we can't find it on one of the uh, streaming services, uh, so it's convenient to have. Uh, so that's it for what's running into the TV. Um, we also have this older Sony CDP297 CD player uh, that I've had since the early 90s, I think around 1991. And uh, this I have running directly into the Sprout. So it's because it's an older CD player, uh, it doesn't have an optical out. Uh, it does have an analog out, which is going to the analog in in the Sprout. And because it's almost a 30-year-old DAC, uh, you know, it, it sounds like an older DAC. It, it sounds fine. It's perfectly clear. Uh, it's great for my wife to be able to listen to some tunes. Um, but it's not something that I would use for critical listening. And you may be wondering, well, if you've got the uh, Blu-ray player, why also have the CD player since you can play CDs with the Blu-ray player? Well, the problem is that that Blu-ray player is just very slow. So it takes several seconds to initialize, a few seconds to open the tray, a few more seconds to close the tray more time to load the CD, so by the time you're playing a CD, it's 
it's probably been over a minute and uh, my wife just doesn't have patience for that and also she likes to switch between CDs a lot and it's just hard to do with that thing um, but with the older Sony it's great it just starts up immediately I open the tray uh, and you can start playing within just you know less than 10 seconds so uh, that works out pretty well uh, and that's really all that we have uh, running into here so uh, we control the whole thing with these uh, three remotes so of course the Samsung uh, has its own remote that can be used for all of the apps Netflix Amazon Prime and a bunch of other apps that are built into the TV itself and this actually can be used to control the Blu-ray player to a certain extent. You can certainly select the Blu-ray player and uh, navigate the menu and start a movie, uh, but that's about it. Uh, if you want to do any of the other functions on the Blu-ray player, uh, you do need this uh, older uh, remote that came with it. And it's kind of interesting to see how things have kind of gotten simplified and streamlined over time. Uh, so this is, you know, circa 2008 and this is uh, 2016, I think. So uh, I do kind of like these uh, simpler interfaces. Now the only thing that this can't do now that we're using the Sprout is control the volume or mute. And so for that, we're using the uh, remote that came with the Sprout. And that works out really well for that. Usually once you set the uh, volume, uh, you don't have to change it too much, I found uh, just in uh, watching movies. Uh, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about how it sounds. So overall, I've been really impressed with this uh, setup. So uh, we've been watching a few different movies and I haven't had any trouble listening to dialogue like the uh, two channel systems I had tried uh, years ago. And it, it sounds actually a lot better than that 5.1 system that I had uh, in the 2000s as well. Uh, now it doesn't, there's no subwoofer so the basses don't get quite as low, but the bass gets pretty low on this thing. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, if you are really big into uh, action movies and you really like that, those low end effects then maybe this wouldn't be for you but I think for most people they'd be surprised how good of a home theater setup this is. Uh, so we've watched a few movies recently. We uh, Just a couple nights ago we watched a movie called Amulet. It's a pretty interesting horror movie uh, but one of the really cool things about that movie is it has a great soundtrack and uh, the sound of the whole movie is just really well done and there's this sort of interesting choral music that runs through it. Uh, there's a lot of ambient stuff with bells and you really hear the sort of the sustain of the bells. Uh, it's really uh, very resolving, uh, which isn't too surprising to me. I did use this as my main listening stereo a while ago. Uh, so I knew that it sounded good, but I was just surprised at how good it sounds with movies. Uh, I also watched uh, the Blu-ray of the movie Suspiria today, the original Dario Argento version. And it has a great soundtrack by the band Goblin and that was really cool and sounded great. Uh, I watched, I didn't watch all of 2001, but I, I have a Blu-ray of that, and I watched uh, the first third of it, and I watched the uh, the original intro where, the, you know, the sun's lined up with the planet, and uh, you hear that the piece by Strauss, and it's really big and bombastic, and that sounded amazing as well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty impressed, and, you know, uh, my wife, who doesn't pay as much attention to these things, when we watched the movie Amulet, she was really uh, surprised at how good it sounds. She's like, wow, this sounds great. It's like we're in a movie theater, so... So yeah, this has worked out really well, and it was kind of fun to be able to put this together with just stuff that I already have. Um, but yeah, I say in general, if you're you're looking for two channel, uh, you might want to check out the Sprout and a pair of Elax. Uh, maybe you could upgrade from the B5s to maybe the the B6.2s or something like that. Um, but I think with these entry level Elax speakers, the Sprout has a lot of synergy, so it does uh, pretty well with that. Um, so yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty cool setup. Uh, so that's it for this time, guys. I will talk to you all in the next video.